This guy, oh. I think he went to eight finals. He was, he Look was a that. fantastic player. His positioning was brilliant. He was yeah. strong enough. He was quick. Yeah. He was great under the ball and temperament. There won't be many that you'd put above him in terms of temperament in big games, especially. Football defenders have the most thankless jobs. When they do their jobs and put in shifts in successfully defending the opposing attackers, their performance goes unnoticed by many people. But if they manage to make one mistake throughout the 90 minutes, they will get crucified by everyone, and all the crucial tackles and recoveries they made quickly get forgotten. That's why if a defender comes along and can avoid receiving scrutiny and be recognized by everyone as not only a top defender, but a top player, then that's a special player. And Paolo Maldini was exactly that, a defender who was able to play any position across the back four while managing to stay world class throughout different eras. I mean, the man quite literally played against Maradona, Zidane, and R9 Ronaldo in his 25 year career. For Maldini, it seemed almost destined that he would become a world class defender ever since he was a young boy because of the lineage he came from. His father, Cesar, was an amazing defender in his own right and even played in Milan's first European Cup and in their first European Cup win. But for Maldini, his career would start elsewhere on the pitch as he would play left and right wing in Milan's youth academy until he turned 14, where he moved to right back. And his quality would shine even brighter in his new position, and in just two years he would break into Milan's first team in a game against Udinese. Maldini would start the match on the bench, but he would soon get called upon by the manager Lidholm to replace the injured Battistini. Lidholm would ask the young Maldini, do you want to play left or right? And Maldini would quickly respond saying, you decide. And with that, Maldini would start his career playing right back. Even at his young age, his quality was apparent to everyone, and Maldini's teammate Ray Wilkins would describe him saying, you could have stuck him in any position because of his skills and his two-footed ability. Those two qualities had been developed from Maldini's time playing both wings, and his time playing as an attacker would continue to serve him well, as he became very strong not only in one-on-one -on -one defense, but also attacking. It would also give him the ability to read attackers and know the attacker's next moves. His ability to read attackers allowed him to play defense differently from many of this era's defenders, as he would rely on positioning and anticipation to shut down attackers, whereas most defenders used physicality to slow down attackers. Maldini was also very different from other defenders, as it was well known that Maldini hated tackling, as he would go on to say, if I have to make a tackle, then I have already made a mistake. In an era that prided itself in playing hard and physical, where players would use tackling as their weapon of choice, Maldini was the complete opposite and instead played in an elegant way that quickly earned him fans worldwide. And him saying he hated tackling wasn't just him saying things to make himself look better. He backed it up with his performances because he would go on to average just 0.5 tackles per game for his career. For, and for reference, modern day Premier League defenders today average about 1.5 tackles per game, which is 3 times Maldini's amount. I would also argue the 90s and 2000s Serie A was much more physical and tackle friendly than modern day Premier League as players back then were able to get away with a lot more with challenges because of no VAR and different rules and mentality. When Maldini would make tackles, it would only be when he was sure a tackle would be the best choice based on the attacker's moves. For example, if a player took a bad touch or turned the back to him. That's why his tackles very often looked very clean and allowed him to defend without earning fouls and would contribute to his ridiculous ability to avoid getting carded as he would only receive 3 red cards in his 25 year playing career. Although Maldini played very elegantly, he was a loud leader and used his reading of the game to communicate with his teammates to truly defend as a unit and make everyone around him better. He also struck fear into many opposition players and no one would dare challenge Maldini's ability. Maldini's career could be summed up in two eras, his time at center back and his time playing left back. And it would be left back where he would begin because after his debut as a right back, he would be played at left back the next season. So at just 17 years old, Maldini would play a foreign position in one of the biggest teams in the toughest league in the world. But for Maldini, this was no problem as his two-footed ability allowed him to play left back just as effectively he played right back. He would also be a lot more generous with tackles early on in his career, but the tackles would still be very Maldini-esque as he would only make tackles when he knew he would come out as the winner. While Maldini would be a bright spot on the team, Milan would struggle in his first two years as they would finish 7th and 5th respectively in the league. Fed up with the results, the owner Berlusconi would make big changes as he would bring in a new manager Arrigo Sacchi. And with the new manager came new players. Important players like Carlo Ancelotti, Marco Van Basten and Ruud Hollet would all join Milan that summer. The new Milan team would be incredibly strong as the back four contained Maldini at left back, with the captain Beresi and Costa Curta at center back, with Tassotti at right back. And elsewhere on the pitch, there were important players like Rijkaard, Ancelotti, Ivani, Hullet, and Van Basten. 
Under Sachi, Maldini would play a more of an attacking left back role as he made plenty of runs to the final third and utilized his skills and athleticism to find himself in position to assist and score. There was big expectations for this Milan team after all the changes, but even with these big expectations, they exceeded them as they would cruise towards the title with 47 points, which happened large in part due to their unbreakable defense as they only gave up 12 goals the entire year. In the next year, Maldini would experience European success as Milan would play Stadia Bucharest in the European Cup Final where Maldini and the defense shut down Bucharest as they would win the European Cup 4-0 in their first year back in Europe. Sachi's Milan would only continue to prove they were the best team in the world in the next season because they would go on to win a second European Cup in a row behind another stellar performance from their defense as Milan would hold Benfica to no goals as they would win the Cup 1-0. In Milan's fourth year under Sachi, however, things wouldn't go as great as it did the previous three years. Milan would reach the quarterfinals of the European Cup where they would face an emerging team from the south of France Marseille. Marseille for decades have been an irrelevant team both in France and in Europe until recently when owner Bernard Tappy took over and revolutionized the squad. Tappy followed the Berlusconi way as he would spend big money to bring in world class players and in just few years he would bring in players like Cantona, Abadi Pele, Deschamps, Jean Pierre Papin and Desailly. In the previous season Marseille were close to being the team to face Milan in the European Cup final but they ultimately came up short against Benfica in the semi-finals, losing by away goals. This season, there wouldn't be Benfica standing in the way of Milan, and this up-and-coming team would earn their chance to dethrone the champions of Europe. Milan would also not be full strength in their first match in the series, as Van Basten was serving a three-game suspension for elbowing a player in the previous cup tie against Club Rouge, and Baresi would be out due to an injury. Missing players or not, Milan proved why they were the team to beat early in the game, as Hollet would capitalize off of Marseille's defender's mistake and score an early goal to put Milan up 1-0. While it looked like Milan would take control of this game just as they had in almost any other games, Marseille started to get back into this game, with Chris Waddle even giving Maldini a bit of a trouble. Waddle would eventually find a big moment in this game as he would find Papin on the right, where Papin would score to take the lead in away goals. While Milan looked to respond with a goal of their own, it would be Marseille who would get the better chances as Abdi Pele would find an open net but he would barely miss as he hit the crossbar, with the game eventually ending 1-1. This game was a bit of a shock to Milan and it would cause their performances to start to slip as they would lose their next two league games as their chances of winning the Serie A started to become more and more unlikely. Marseille would meet Milan again in the second leg, this time at the Velodrome. And even with Milan's bad form, there would be reason for optimism as Baresi would be back from his injury for this match. But even with Baresi's return, Milan looked uncomfortable as Marseille would get the better chances and they just played like the better team as they led on the way goals. And in the 75th minute, Waddle scored a volley to give Marseille the leading goals 2-1 and the game would wind down to the final whistle as Milan would be unable to respond. But there was a mistake. The referee blew the whistle 3 minutes too early, but as the referee realized, it was too late because fans had invaded the pitch and the spotlights had been turned off, which caused the players to be sent to the locker rooms. The game was unable to restart because one of the spotlights refused to be turned on until 20 minutes later. The light was turned on and now the game was good to restart. But Milan had other plans because CEO Adriano Galliani refused to let his team play the final 3 minutes even though Milan players wanted to complete the game because Galliani wanted a replay to bail them out just like they were bailed out by a fog a couple of years earlier which resulted in a replay. This time they would fail to get bailed out and instead they would be handed a 1 year ban from Europe as a result for failing to resume the match. In the league, Maldini would lead the best defense as Milan only gave up 19 goals in the season, but that still wouldn't be enough as Sampdoria would finish above Milan by 5 points. That would mark the end of Sacchi's era in Milan, and in came new manager Fabio Capello. Under Capello, Maldini would play a bit of a more defensive left back role as he wouldn't be allowed to get further up the pitch like he did previously, and instead was relied upon even more to ensure the back line was solid with his positioning and one-on-one -on -one defense. Capello would turn Milan's fortunes around and they would look like the Milan of old as they would go unbeaten in the league and they would continue their performance into the next season as they went unbeaten for a total of 58 straight league matches. Their unbeaten record would be the best ever in Syria and would earn them the nickname Invincibles and in their first year back in Europe after the ban, they would reach all the way to the final. In the final, they would face familiar faces in Marseille, who were now missing their star man Papin as he signed with Milan this year. But Papin wouldn't get to start as Van Basten, who was struggling with injuries, was still picked to start the match. Maldini and the defense would shut down and prevent Marseille's attack from any chances until just before halftime, 
when the referee wrongly gave Marseille the corner as the ball hit Pele as it went out. With their only chance of the game, Marseille would score as Boli headed the ball in to give Marseille the lead in the game. Milan would fail to score the rest of the game and would lose to Marseille yet again as they cemented themselves as Milan's boogeyman. News would soon come out though that Marseille had participated in match fixing in the French league and years later, the players of the Marseille squad would admit that the team's doctors would inject unknown injections before the match against Milan. But there was nothing that could be done for Milan to gain that title back as while Marseille were stripped of their French league title, they still kept the Champions League trophy. Even with their disappointing finish in the Champions League, Maldini and Milan would win their second league title in a row as they would finish with 50 points behind the best defense in the league only giving up 32 goals. In the next season, Milan would get to right their wrongs as they reached the Champions League final again. This time, they would face Barcelona who was managed by Johan Cruyff. This Barcelona side was no joke as Cruyff revolutionized the sport with a style of attacking that wild fans all over the world and led to Barcelona winning their fourth straight league title that year. And Milan weren't the Milan of old as they no longer had key players like Rijkaard, Hullet, and Van Basten. And to add to that, Milan was missing two of their center backs that game in Baresi and Costa Corta, which made Milan start Maldini at center back. Understandably, Cruyff was very confident in winning this game, and he would even go on to say before the match, We are more complete, competitive, and experienced. Milan are nothing out of this world. They base their game on defense, we base ours on attack. To make his point further clear, he would point out both clubs' big signings. Romario for Barcelona, who looked class in his first season in Barcelona, scoring 30 goals in 33 games, while Milan signed a defensive player in Desai, which Cruyff would say is telling. The Romario signing though caused a bit of a registration issue because it would force Cruyff to choose one of his four foreigners in Romario, Ronald Koeman, Stoichkov, and Michael Laudrup to leave out. Cruyff would choose Laudrup to leave out because it was becoming clear that he wasn't going to re-sign with the club. But this decision may have proved to be unwise because it weakened Barca's attack and left out a threat Milan was worried about. With that, a clash between two philosophies would be set with Barcelona's flashy attacking style taking on Milan's safe and sound defense first mantra. In this match, Barcelona's front three of Bigiri Stein, Romario, and Stoichkov would be taking on Milan's injury riddled backline that was led by Maldini. Milan would be able to minimize Barca's attack with Desai winning the ball left and right and Maldini ensuring Barca's attack wouldn't get behind the defense. To make matters worse for Barca, the boring defensive Milan would score 4 goals as they put in an all-time performance to win the Champions League 4-0. Milan would also win their third straight league title in a row that year. But the good news wouldn't stop there for Maldini as he would also reach all the way to the World Cup final that summer. In the final, Maldini would take on Brazil and he would put in a great performance where it seemed like he was everywhere on the pitch, making crucial interceptions, winning headers, and putting in clean challenges that limited Brazil to zero goals. But Italy wouldn't be able to score either, so the game would head into penalties where Brazil would ultimately win 3-2. Maldini's efforts though wouldn't go unnoticed that year and he would be awarded Player of the Year award by World Soccer Magazine, becoming the first defender ever to win the award, and also came third for the Ballon d'Or that year. In the next season, Milan would win the league again, but after winning seemingly everything, Milan would change managers, as Capello would join Real Madrid and Sachi would return to AC Milan. Things wouldn't be as great as the first time though, as Milan would finish 11th in his first season back, and club captain Baresi would also retire after this season in which he handed the captain's arband to Maldini, who was now looked upon as the captain. This would lead to yet another change in managers, and this time Alberto Zaccheroni would be the man for the job. Zaccheroni would shake things up in Milan as he would move from a back 4 to a back 3, with Maldini playing as a wide center back, or you could call it a defensive left back in a back 3. The change would benefit Maldini because he was getting older, so he didn't have the pace or stamina to cover the left flank like before but now he had support from left wing backs to defend the left flank. In this role, Maldini would usually only push up to the halfway line unless they were losing, in which he would be asked to push up further. Instead of pushing further up the pitch and contributing to the attack like he used to, he now utilized his other strengths much more, in particular instincts and anticipation, as he would use those skills to make up for his declining speed to cover space behind. He would also become a much more cautious tackler, and he instead relied on early preventive actions like interceptions and cutting down attackers passing angles. And his awareness gained him the ability to almost never make a dangerous tackle. In this new formation, Maldini regained form as he transformed his game to become an even bigger presence in defense. And this would lead to Milan winning the title by one point over Lazio with 70 points. While Milan enjoyed a great campaign in the first season, in the two seasons that came after they failed to replicate the success as they finished 3rd and 6th 
and eventually Zaccaroni would be replaced by former Juventus manager Carlo Ancelotti. Under Ancelotti, the team would move back to a back four where Maldini would play as a center back, now fully relied on focusing on defending instead of attacking. First season for Ancelotti was a success as Milan would rejoin the Champions League as they finished fourth and also reach the semi-finals of Europa as things would get back on track for Milan. In the following season, a big change would happen in the back line as Milan would make a big signing by getting a center back by the name of Alessandro Nesta. The young Nesta and Maldini would form an unbreakable duel at center back as they would complement one another amazingly. Nesta was one of the best in the world in tackling and he wasn't afraid to use it and also provided youthful physicality. While Maldini was a vocal leader who used his reading of the game to communicate his ideas with his teammates to make everyone better. These two would raise each other's abilities and they would often frustrate opposing teams and hold them to zero goals and they would reach all the way to the final of the Champions League that year facing their rivals Juventus. Juventus boasted a strong strike partnership in Trezeguet and Del Piero and it was Nesta and Maldini's jobs to make sure they didn't get a chance to score. Both teams would have chances that could have easily changed the score early in the game. The first coming in from Milan as Shevchenko would score but get called back because Inzaghi was in the way of Buffon. After that, Milan wouldn't make it easy for Buffon as they forced him to make key saves with some of their next chances. But Juventus would strike back as they would get chances of their own with their best coming from an Antonio Conte header that hit post. But after that chance, the game would quiet down as Maldini would start to show why he was in a class of his own. Maldini would frustrate Juventus as he would always be one step ahead and neutralize their attack just from his positioning and interceptions. The game would go into extra time where it stayed scoreless and in penalties, it would be Milan who would come out victorious as Maldini would be named man of the match for his incredible performance. Milan would continue their reign the next season as they would win the Serie A with a record 82 points and in the season after they would reach the Champions League final again. This Milan team had an incredible back four with world class players in every position as Maldini would move to left back as Nesta and Stam would play at center back with Cafu playing on the right. The game would start off on a magical note as Maldini would score in the very first minute from a free kick and Crespo would soon get two goals of his own to put Milan up 3-0 just before halftime. But somehow, some way, Liverpool would manage to find three goals to respond with which would force the game to go into penalties where Liverpool would win. Nobody would have blamed Maldini if he retired after this match as he was 36 by this point and accomplished pretty much everything there was in non-international stages as he won multiple Serie A's and playing in 7 Champions League finals winning 4 times. But Maldini would stick around as he still had gas left in his tank. In 2 years after that night in Istanbul, Milan would reach the Champions League finals again to face Liverpool again. In this game, Inzaghi would come up big as he would score just before halftime giving Milan the lead. And this time, Maldini wouldn't repeat the same mistake as last time and would hold on to the lead throughout the whole match as Milan would win 2-1. With this victory, Maldini would become the oldest captain ever at 38 to win a Champions League final. But even at his old age of 38, he could still play as his IQ and positioning enabled him to not need athleticism and pace to defend the best attackers. Maldini would go on to play two more years until he finally retired after having played 647 Serie A matches in 25 years and Milan would retire Maldini's number three just like they did with his mentor Franco Beresi. With that, Maldini cemented his spot as probably the best defender of all time because of his ability to stay world class throughout his 25 year career even at different positions. He was one of those rare unicorns that could play against attackers from any era. With him starting his career playing against players like Jurgen Klinsmann to Cristiano Ronaldo by the end of his career and any player in between the two eras. While he may not have the coveted Ballon d'Or or the World Cup, everyone knows of the great talent of Maldini and if you didn't know before, I hope the video spread awareness on just how great Maldini was. I was one of those people who knew Maldini just from people saying how great he was and his icon card on FIFA, but after researching into his career, it became evident that I didn't know just how good Maldini's talents were and the peaks he reached. 